our goal is to help clients become collaborators. How do you develop a therapeutic alliance with people who have done sometimes rather nasty things? And how do you use the glue, that relationship, as the basis for getting them to be a partner in treatment? So for instance, uh, in, in, in a handbook on treatment of individuals with anger control uh, that I have written, for instance, there is in the back of this an appendix on how to take an angry adolescent or adult and turn them into a social problem solver. So this is the kind of social discourse that could be used. We also try and teach them a variety of ways of breaking this kind of vicious cycle that they get into. Sometimes it is helping them reappraise these kinds of triggers. Sometimes it's dealing with the emotional dysregulation in learning various skills like relaxation, how to take time out, how to use acceptance strategies. Sometimes it's looking at the kinds of thinking processes that we know that you're all too familiar with that contribute and escalate the nature of the anger and the aggression. So there are a number of rethinking, cognitive restructuring procedures, problem solving. Uh, and then at the behavioral level, we try to teach people how to engage in conflict resolution, communication skills, problem solving, and the like. The thing that's most encouraging is that while the data is preliminary, if you look at the outcome studies, and, and they're still limited, you know, there aren't that many truly good randomized studies with clinical populations. Um, but of the studies that exist, this particular form of cognitive behavioral intervention has most promise. It can be done at an individual level, it can be done on a group basis, and it could also be done on couples and families. You know, and in the handbook, I review and summarize the state of the art. 